In this video, I show you how to configure your Vue 3 applications with ESLint and Prettier. Because linters follow a certain set of rules, also called a preset, to write or structure your code, they can be used by different teams of developers to ensure code quality and also consistency, which also makes collaboration among these teams that work on the same source code easier. There are many JavaScript linters like JSHint, JSCS, but one of the most commonly used is ESLint. ESLint follows rules that are written in JavaScript code using the ESLint parser. ESLint works by translating JavaScript into an abstract syntax tree under the hood that is traversed to ensure that all the nodes are laid out correctly and if not, it flags the code as an error or a warning basing on how rules are set. ESLint can also auto-fix some errors and warnings in your code and in the end it improves the quality of your code. To best understand how to configure ESLint in Vue, we are going to use a basic view project with JavaScript. So here we set it up and it's now running. We have a basic to-do list items component that will accept a list items prop of type array and here we are looping over the items that will be passed in the list items array prop and then we are displaying each list item here we import the component in the app.view view and then pass the to-do list array in the list items prop and here we are able to see the results to get started with eslint you have to install it into your project with the eslint plugin view which is the official ESLint plugin for Vue applications. Because by default ESLint does not support Vue files, so this plugin helps to bridge that gap so that we are able to use ESLint to lint the templates and scripts in our Vue files. It also makes it possible for ESLint to recognize Vue code in JavaScript files. So with having that installed, we are able to lint our Vue code basing on certain rules that we can set in the ESLint RSC file, which is the configuration file for ESLint. Because the package.json has a type of module, we need to use the CJS extension on the ESLint RSC file. In this file, because it is a module, we are going to export it. Inside the object, we have the extends and the rules properties. The extends is going to be an array of presets. Presets are a set of ESLint rules that are already defined for us so that we do not have to write every rule from scratch. And in the rules object, we can add our own rules or even override the rules that are already defined in the presets. The ESLint plugin comes with some presets that are specifically for view, just like you see them here. These are presets for Vue 2 and these are presets for Vue 3. Since we are working with Vue 3, we are going to use Vue Vue 3 recommended preset because it contains all rules of these other Vue 3 presets plus other rules that are widely used for consistency. So we activate these rules by adding this preset in our extends array and right away you see that we start getting ones in our view code that we can correct so that we have that uniformity and consistency in our code. You can know more about each warning by hovering over the line of code with a warning. And if that warning can automatically be fixed, you can do so with a quick fix within your IDE. Or you can just do it manually. Remember, we can always add our own rules or even override rules that are already defined in the activated presets. For example, the ESLint plugin for Vue has more rules that can be found here and we can always choose a rule to add or override from the activated preset. Let's give it a try. We are going to override the attribute hyphenation rule that is already included in the view recommended preset but it is deactivated by default so we are going to activate and make it produce an error whenever a component 
as attribute that is not separated by a dash. We activate it by adding it to the rules option and give it an ID of error. The error level can differ. It can be an error or a warning or it can just be off. As you see the error is displaying in the component that we imported in the update view. With the list items attribute that is not separated by a dash, we can also change the error level to one and it will change into a warning. We can fix it within our IDE and you see the warning goes away. I will undo it so that we can get the warning back. We can also run ESLint view rules from the command line with this command. So we can see all ESLint warnings or errors from the command line. We also automatically fix some of the errors and warnings from the command line with a fix tag. So if we run ESLint again, you see that all warnings are gone and they are fixed in our code. We can also add these commands to be part of our scripts that we can always run from the command line before we push our applications to production or before we share our application code with others. The ESLint view plugin works with only view files, but we might also want to configure ESLint with other files like the TypeScript and JavaScript files. This is when we use ESLint rules, but we can also use ESLint presets like the ESLint recommended preset that contains all the rules with the green ticks on them. So we activate it by adding it to our extends array and you see we get this error that comes from one of the rules that are defined within the preset which is the no and def rule that does not allow you to use variables that are not defined. For this case, mod is considered to be undefined but it is already defined in node so we consider it to be global. So we can use the ESLint comment that will take away this error. There are also some other JavaScript presets that are used in the industry but the most common are the standard and the Airbnb presets. Choosing which presets to use really depends on the company where you are working. They might be using a specific preset that you all have to follow so that you produce code that looks alike or basically code that really looks like it's really from one person but in real sense it's from different people in a team but because you're using that specific preset it makes it look like it's from one person. Let's try to use the standard preset in our view application. We can install it globally, though it is better if we install it locally into our projects because it makes collaboration easier. So here we install it as a dev dependency and with that we already have it activated in our project. So assuming you have a counter in your store, which is a JavaScript file that has an action that increments the count state if the count is zero. This code already follows the standard preset rules. So if we go against some of them, you see that we start getting errors. These all come from the standard preset. If you don't see these highlights in your code, that means you have to install the standard extension for your code editor. You can also check your code against the standard preset from the command line. These are the errors or warnings that are produced by the standard preset. And you can fix some of them with the fix flag. Prettier is a code formatter that enforces a consistent style of your code. It does this by passing your code and reprinting it with its own rules that take the maximum line length into account. And it also wraps your code when necessary. Implementing Prettier will make your code cleaner and more consistent. To get started with Prettier, You'll first need to install the Prettier extension for your code editor. Then you can change some settings. Then you need to enable auto save and also format on save. This will save you a lot of time. You then install Prettier into your project and the ESLint config Prettier that will help to remove some of the conflicts. 
that may arise from the rule set by Pretia and ESLint. Then add Pretia as the last element in the extends array. We can also configure Pretia from the Pretia RCJSON file. To see that Pretia is working, I will mess up the update view template. And if I press Ctrl S to save the file, you see that Pretia formats the file back to how it's supposed to be.